Okay, it says that we are live. Um, we are so excited to have you guys here joining us for World Milk Day. Thank you so much for celebrating um, this June 1st World Milk Day with Dairy Discovery. We are a nonprofit program that provides a personal connection to your food. And usually we do that through hands-on activities. That That's what we pride ourselves on. We, over the last 14 years, we've um, hosted tens of thousands of visitors out to our farm and taught them about modern agriculture and what happens on today's dairy farms. And um, this year, due to the stay-at-home order, we have had zero school, um, school tours. Um, we usually are the destination, or we think we are the destination, <laughs> one of them anyway, for end-of-the-year field trips. And um, to have no uh, buses pulling in here and unloading kids has been pretty tough. Um, we, I think uh, it's kind of devastating and we're almost in like what I call like desperate times call for mm -hmm. desperate measures. Um, a lot of people have said the word unprecedented. Um, this is an unprecedented time. So we're doing an unprecedented event. This is a 24 hour live stream event. Um, we are in hour five. So you guys have to get back here and come back and see us um, for the rest of the 19 hours. You can go onto our website and look at um, the full schedule, dairydiscovery.org. It's action packed. I mean, I'm exhausted already at hour five. I, we've done, we've had so many fun things. So we just got back from pushing up the cow's feed and I am here meeting with Margie. I kind of um, told a little bit about you, Margie, uh, how you work with DFA, which is our co-op and how important that is for our farm because we're good with cows. You know, we know what happens on the farm, but we need to um, partner with other people and pool our resources so that we can find our co-op will, um, find relationships with different brands and figure out the processing, the packaging, the distribution, and we can just worry about the cows, right? So, <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, it just helps it be a little bit more streamlined and kind of stay in your lane sort of thing. Yep. So we're very happy to have you here on World yep. Milk Day. I know DFA is probably pretty pumped about World Milk Day. We are. So, we're very excited and I'm excited what? to be here with you. Yeah. Very early this morning. <laughs> I, know, I know. Um, bless your heart. I don't know why you signed up for this um, time slot, but I love you. Um, okay, so tell us a little bit about you and about DFA and like what what do you do? Sure. So um, my name is Margie Knust. I work in communications in our Kansas City, Kansas office, which is the um, headquarters for Dairy Farmers of America. Um, I have been with DFA for um, twelve years now. Um, which this is my, I don't have an ag background. I didn't grow up on a farm. Um, when I took the job at DFA, I, I knew nothing about dairy. So it's been um, 12 years of a lot of learning experience, but um, it's, a, it's, it's definitely the most fulfilling job that I've ever had. And, and really the reason that um, almost everyone at DFA, um, the reason that we're there is for you guys. Um, working for, for dairy farm families is um, just is a, very fulfilling job. I know that I'm, I'm helping people when I do my job, which my job is in communication. So I um, get to make sure that we're um, communicating with you guys about everything, talking to you about what's going on with the co-op, talking to our employees, talking to our customers. Oh. Um, so I've been with DFA for 12 years. My name is Margie Canuse again oh. for people. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, so when I uh, started at DFA, we were, um, we were a company, we had about 20 plants. We are now with the acquisition of Dean Foods here recently, um, we're at about 90 plants. So it's been um, a lot of growth over the past decade. Um, so, which is very exciting. Um, one of the things that I think DFA, the reason that I love working at DFA is, is all of you guys, all of the, the dairy farm families. Um, I luckily, since I'm in communications, I get to work with you guys on a pretty regular basis um, and talk to members all the time, which is, um, definitely my favorite part of the job. So I'm really excited to be here um, and talk to you about our plans for World Milk Day. Um, it's a very big day in the dairy industry. So we're very excited and ready to kick off our kick off our uh, initiatives. So, okay. You um, referred to it as um, you kind of had an analogy for the, what did <laughs> yeah, you call it's it? our, it's our Super Bowl. It's the Super Bowl yeah. of dairy is World Milk Day. So we're very excited. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Just to give the outside uh, world a little perspective on uh, how the dairy farmers mentality is or dairy industry. Right. Mentality. So um, tell us a little bit about what you've got coming up. Um, yeah. I know you're kind of launching get kind of a big announcement, I think, right? Yeah. So we're launching our gallons for good initiative. Um, we, you know, really during this time, like you said, this is a totally unprecedented time. Everybody's dealing with things that they've not had to deal with before, including the dairy industry, including you guys on the farms, um, us and co-ops, processors, haulers. Um, there's so many people who dairy is playing such an essential role right now. Um, you know, the, the, students who rely on free and reduced meals at schools aren't, aren't necessarily getting those or they're getting them in a different way. Um, and the need at food banks um, is, has skyrocketed. And so we know that dairy is, especially fluid milk, is one of the most requested but least donated items in food banks. Um, and that's just year round, but certainly now more than ever. And dairy is such a nutritious food. It gives you so much nutritional bang for the buck that it's really one of the most important foods to have in food banks. Um, so we actually, in early April, um, we had one of, it actually was started by a member, by one of our dairy farmer owners, um, came to us and said, you know, I really wanna help. I, I wanna, I see what's going on. I see people that need food. I know dairy is really important. I would like to help start, get something started that we can get some dairy into food banks. So that really kicked off our Farmers Feeding Families Fund. Um, and so we started that in early April. Um, it's funded completely by donations from members and employees. Um, and we have raised over $500,000 now um, for- Wait a this second. This is all just internal? Yeah. So it's all member and employee donations. We have had a couple. We're also working with customers and, and some other industry organizations that we work with to um, get some donations. But, but the majority has been members and employees um, donations. So- um, that money all is going to community food banks um, for the, specifically for the purchase of dairy products. Um, we've also been asking our farmer owners for their help in helping us identify food banks who might need a donation. Um, and so we have on our website at dfamilk.com slash DFA cares. Um, they can go and actually nominate a food bank or submit a food bank for to get a donation. Um, and so we've been kind of going through those and trying to get trying to just get as much as much as we can out to food banks so that they can purchase dairy products. Um, and so for June Dairy Month, so World Milk Day kicks off the whole month of celebrating dairy. Um, and so we decided to launch our Gallons for Good initiative, which is just our opportunity to thank the people who have been doing everything they can to make sure that dairy is getting onto the hand in, onto the tables of people who need it, um, especially during this time. Um, you know, you hear a lot about essential workers and really everyone in the dairy is, industry is essential. Um, the industry hasn't stopped. We, the cows continue to get milk, the milk continues to get picked up, continues to get processed and continues to get into consumers' hands, which is more important I think now than, than ever. Um, and so the Gallons for Good initiative is something we're asking everybody to get on social media, um, tag somebody that they're grateful for, or just post about what they're grateful for right now, um, and use the hashtag Gallons for Good. For every hashtag used, every post using that hashtag, we'll donate a dollar to the Farmers Feeding Families Fund to get into food banks and to get dairy into the hands of those who need it. Um, in addition to the money that we've donated, we've also been donating um, product. So, you know, we had supply and demand had, had quite a um, imbalance there for a little bit with schools closing and restaurants closing. Um, and so that left in some areas of the country had some milk that didn't have a place to go. Um, so we worked to, you know, find processing capacity for that milk so that we could get it processed into a form that we could then donate. Um, and so we donated, we're now at, I think we're about 12 million pounds of milk has been um, donated and that um, that includes some of the the money that's gone but also then um, excess milk that would have otherwise had to go down the drain um, that we ended up getting processed and able to donate so um, we're trying to continue that momentum um, keep that through the month of June trying to get some money raised for the farmers feeding families fund because we know that that need is still there um, it's not going away so we want to make sure that we're getting uh, the most nutrition that we can to the people who really need it right now yeah um I don't know, I'm just kind of tired or what, but <laughs> just here, no, I mean, that just so much about I mean, what you just said is there's just so much there. We've got kids who are just 
or I mean, anyone who just is um, deprived of nutrition right now, it's just hard, so mm -hmm. hard to imagine that. I mean, getting up every day and all, all of our team, that's all we think about is, oh, we're making food for people, you know, and mm -hmm. um, just to think about people not being able to put that gallon of milk in their fridge or um, have that milk for their cereal in the morning. It's just like unfathomable, fathomable. So <laughs> I am so excited to hear about this program. When you talked about it, I was like, we need to talk about that on <laughs> some way. And then just, you know, as you were talking and um, kind of coming into this event today, just the heaviness, um, you know, we've got uh, all this, uh, kind of turmoil going mm -hmm. around in the background or maybe not even in the background in the very front it's, ground yeah. like it's heavy and um I almost thought like is it kind of tone deaf to do something fun today but mm -hmm. hearing you like we need to be good we need to show people good we need to um now is the time to do even more good you know and mm -hmm. show people more good um, so I am just so excited to hear about this Gallons for Good campaign. Yeah. I just and can't I, say enough. Yeah. yeah. And I think that there is so much good happening right now. There's a lot. I mean, there. you're right. There's a lot that's just bringing a lot of people pain and suffering and, and we can't ignore that. That's, that's hard to, um, but it, it is it's hard to deal with every day. And so I think um, it's important that we look for the, the good that's happening too. And I think that this is a great initiative that lets people um, publicly recognize things that you know they're they're grateful for they're thankful that we have so much to be thankful for even in these times when you know there is a lot of pain and suffering and and people are missing things they're missing canceled vacations and canceled you know soccer games my kids don't have you know soccer practice anymore which is just a, a crazy time for us because we we don't have we're not rushing around on the weekends trying to get to games or get to um you know concerts or recitals or things like that and so um it's definitely you know it's hard on a lot of people I think for a lot of a lot of different reasons um oh, not just yeah. you know economic but also there's you know mental health aspects there's there's all kinds of things that we're just you're right that are heavy things that we're dealing with and so I think it's important that anytime we can find you know, a way to, to shine some some light on the things that are, are still happening that are good. There's so many people working so hard um, to make sure that the things that we need are there. Um, all of the farmers, um, the healthcare workers, the, I mean, there's so many people that are just working day in and day out to just, you know, make things better. And so I think it's important that we're, we're recognizing that. And then um, in the process of recognizing that, then you're doing something, you know, that in itself is a good act and you're, you're raising money for a fund that that's really needed. So, um, I'm really excited. Um, everybody can use hashtag gallons for good on any of the social media platforms. Um, we'll be collecting all of those and then, um, hopefully getting a lot of money raised for the, the farmers feeding families fund. Okay. Um, that's awesome. So you talked about, um, you talked about, uh, like how you didn't come from a dairy background or agriculture or farming. Right. <laughs> what are some of the things that, um, now you, so you, like, I feel like if I go out and I tell people oh, well, I'm a dairy farmer, like, I don't know. I don't know if I get out into like outside mm -hmm. of my bubble, I guess. <laughs> um, but, uh, what happens when you go out and you say like, Oh, I work for DFA. What is that? Like, yeah. Dairy yeah. Farmers. It, if, if you're not some, in the industry, a lot of people don't know what DFA yeah. is. What are some questions that you get asked and how do you deal with that? Or what do you say? Yeah. Um, so a lot of times it's questions about, um, I'm usually the go-to person for my friends and family. If they read a headline about um, the industry, whether that's, um, you know, it's, you know, cow care or organic milk. A lot of, I get a lot of questions about the nutrition of different kinds of milk or different kinds of dairy products. Um, I think there's some confusion out there with consumers when they, um, you know, having choice is great, but they um, sometimes get confused on, on what those choices are and what the difference is between them. So um, we try and do a lot of, of kind of explaining that, you know, um, organic milk is just as nutritious as conventional milk, you know, that the difference lies in, you know, how the different kinds of care aspects with the cows or the, you know, the what they eat and that sort of thing. So it's, um, it, it's interesting. A lot of some of the questions I get, um, yeah. especially depending on if they come from, you know, well, you know, with all the tours with kids, kids often have the best questions. 
<laughs> so those yeah. are always my favorites. <laughs> um, yeah, do you have like any, um, or, or were there any, like anything that really surprised you, you know, when you, or what was like a when light bulb moment for you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I came into, I came into the industry with so little knowledge of it. Um, and honestly, I, I don't think, and I'm probably typical of a lot of consumers that I didn't think a lot about where my food came from. Um, I, you know, always could go to the store and get what I needed and, um, didn't put a whole ton of thought into where it came from. Um, and so I think once I, once I started DFA, especially as I got to know different, uh, all of our farmer owners, um, and got to visit farms and, um, I was really touched by when I would visit farms and I, every, every experience I've had on a farm has been good. Um, everyone's always answered any question I have, no matter, you know, how basic or how, um, dumb I think it is. It's always met with, you know, they're excited to answer. They're excited to show what they do. Um, I get invited into houses and get to, you know, have these really great meals. Um, farmers know how to eat. So, um, whenever we go, yep. whenever I, yeah, yes. we just made. <laughs> um, and so, um, I think just getting to know our farmer owners and understanding that this isn't just a job for them. You know, you guys love what you do. You're in it because you love your animals and you love doing what you do every day. You wouldn't do it if you, if you, you know, if you didn't, um, it really is a more of a calling than a job. And I think that that's very apparent whenever you talk to a farmer. Um, and so I think that really kind of made me very passionate about wanting to tell those stories to consumers and wanting consumers to understand where their food comes from, the passion that goes into it, the dedication it takes that, you know, this is a 24 hour job. You guys don't get weekends. You don't get vacations. Like, you know, you can't just take two weeks off and head off to, you know, travel and not have to worry about what's going on at home. That's, that's not how that works. And so, um, that really, I think that really, um, struck me and I really realized like, you know, people need to know this, people need to know where their food comes from. Um, and that's true across all of agriculture. That's all, you know, farmers are, are, are a dedicated group and they're, um, it's important. I think that people see that. Yeah. Um, that kind of is what I was going to ask you about. I kind of led into my other question. I was going to say, so you agreed to do an interview with me in the middle of the night and, um, DFA, uh, just seemed to like drop everything when I, when I, um, called last minute and asked if you guys could help me with this, uh, project or <laughs> unprecedented event. <laughs> and, um, you were just like all in. So, mm -hmm. I'm just like, why, you know, this little town, Alto, Michigan, um, you talked about DFA has 90, what did you say, 90? Yeah, 90 oh, plants. 90 plants. Like, mm -hmm. why would you want to help this little tiny program, I guess, <laughs> at this one little farm? So, yeah, well, because it's important. And also you guys, you own the cooperative. So, um, you know, I, our CEO actually talks about how he, he doesn't consider himself CEO. He works for 13,000 CEOs that own DFA. Um, and so, I've heard him say that. <laughs> so, and that's really, um, that's kind of, you know, that's part of our culture. We really, um, we know that we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. Um, the dairy industry, you know, you're, you're so important to so much of the country. And so, um, part of our job is to serve our members. And, um, and it's actually, like I said, that's my favorite part of my job. So um, anytime I can do something for a member or with a member, um, I jump on it because um, it's always fun. This is a, this was such an ambitious project. When you, when um, we got the email that you were doing this, I was like, 24 hours. <laughs> like that is so much time to fill. Um, so anything that, you know, we could do to, to help that we were going to do, but, um, yeah. I think it's a great thing that you're doing and I am very impressed with it because I, I can't imagine staying up for 24 hours, but let alone talking to people for that long yeah. and filling it with interesting content. <laughs> I don't know if you heard my comment earlier. Um, you probably haven't been, you probably were sleeping. I hope you were, but I was saying like, 
I, the last time I stayed up for 40 hours in a row was when I was giving birth to my first born <laughs> child 20 years ago. So here I am 20 years later, like, yeah, I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I said, we are just crazy times, um, mm -hmm. crazy, crazy uh, results, I guess. So here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just trying to get the word out, like you said, and make sure people know where their food's coming from. And if they have any questions or anything, we're dairy farmers, like you said, love answering questions. We love opening our farm up. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, this is a exciting, exciting for us to, to do this event. So um, is there somewhere that we should go get more information on that gallons of good or should they just, yes. um, I mean, they can get it off of our website too, but yeah, there is a little bit um, more. Yeah, gallonsofgood.com is actually um, the microsite that we have set up. So if you just go to gallonsofgood.com, it kind of talks about the initiative. Um, there's a tracker there, so you can keep track. You can see like how many, um, how much money we've raised. Um, so you can kind of see your contribution, make it tick up. Um, and then there, are, there's also a link there to go to um, the site that I was talking about earlier, where you can submit a food bank for a donation. If you have a local community food bank that you know. Um, need something because what we really want to do is get especially rural food banks don't get a lot of attention sometimes and so um, really wanting to make sure that we're finding those and identifying those and, and reaching out to them and, and getting dairy products into the hands of those who need it so gallonsgood.com um, should have all of the information on there oh I am just so excited um, that you guys are you know just jumped on that need it yeah. is really exciting I sit on the board for our local one of our local food pantries Oh, and yeah. just to hear you say like, there's such a need there. They need a minimum of 30 gallons of milk a week mm -hmm. and they um, sometimes don't get any. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. I mean, 30 to zero that is, and that's just one little town, you know? Mm -hmm. So I can just imagine um, that the need is just so great. And I know that's going to grow even more in the next few months or yep. what I'm afraid of anyway, I guess I shouldn't be fearful, but yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, I don't know what time it is, but I just really appreciate you coming. I probably took yeah. up way too much of your time. You need to oh, get no, back to fine. bed or your baby. <laughs> I think you have a baby over there too. So um, yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, we're definitely, I'm definitely going to that website, trying to get people to go there and um, just help our, our community. And um, yeah, I'm going to totally um, nominate my. Yeah. Sandra, yeah, so. <laughs> please do. No, yeah. please do. That would be great. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you again so much. Yeah. Um, the featured dairy products have been awesome so far. Oh, except I forgot um, when I did the cottage cheese, uh -huh. I forgot to put the pepper. I, I didn't bring any pepper. So <laughs> I was like, ah, but then um, the fruit cottage cheese is coming up uh -huh. um, later in the, oh, good. In, uh, in the day. So I'll be doing oh, that. Have you, yeah. Um, yeah. The fruit smoothie. What was the, what dairy product did you, were you really excited to send me? Cause you sent me like almost all of the 24 dairy products that we're featuring. Yeah, so. we sent quite a bit. Um, I'm trying to remember what we had in there. Um, I like the, so the crisps and cubes are one that is fairly new. Um, the Borden crisps and cubes are, um, they just launched within the last year. Um, and they are like, so cubes of, of cheese and then these crisps, crisps that are actually um, baked cheese. And so um, it's cheese and cheese, which are my favorite things. Um, but the- I get the, to eat these, right? Yeah, it, yeah. It was in we there. sent okay. those to you. Yep, yep. I can't wait. So it's I don't little, even know what's um, coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Christmas for me every hour. What yeah. do I do? Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, well, that's kind of exciting gosh, to get a little snack. And cheese, okay. Yeah, I, yeah, they're delicious. I can't wait. Okay, so <laughs> you guys stay tuned. Um, just again, thank you to Margie. Thank you to DFA for featuring all of these dairy products. And most of all, just being a light in this dark time. Like that is just why I just needed you to share your story in the middle of the night. Like yeah. literally <laughs> it's dark and we're talking about all this good. And I just, it really is moving. So we even opened up the beginning of this event with a prayer and just talking about loving our neighbor. And I think this gallons of good is just like exactly what we need at this time. So okay. it's just like a solution. It's like, yeah. okay, what are we going to do? <laughs> Here you go. Gallons for good. What, yep. what, 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 it's just easy, you know, mm -hmm. like let's, yeah, let's step up. So yeah. thank you.
Okay. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Happy World Milk Day. <laughs> <laughs> I know only 19 or 18 right. hours left at this point. <laughs> So I get to go have coffee. Yeah. Uh, is that in our next hour? What do we do next? Oh, we make ice cream. We're making ice cream yeah, next. Ice. And then what are we doing after that? Oh, the girls are gonna um, take everybody to the calf barn and they're gonna do a calf barn tour. Oh, and then um, after that, coffee. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, lots of coffee. Excited. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, thank you. We're gonna sign off. Thank and if you, you guys um, liked what Margie had to say or anything, there is a shop now button. You can give us a tip for Dairy Discovery as you head over to the Gallons for Good website. Don't forget to do that. Nominate your charity or your food bank, you guys. Yeah. People need milk. Yeah, please like, do. And it's World Milk Day. What better way to honor <laughs> World Milk Day than giving someone milk? Oh my gosh, I'm excited. Okay, I didn't even have <laughs> well, coffee yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll see you. I'm sure you'll need it. <laughs> Good luck. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.